Hey everyone, well it's a beautiful starry night. It's actually June 1st, so the 1st of June here in a beautiful spring evening. It's just about 3 in the morning, I'm just getting off my shift. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit today about ego in the workplace and how ego is so damaging for the workplace. And uh, I have a lot of history with um, struggling with people and their egos in workplaces. It's happened to me my whole life. Um, well, not at my produce warehouse. That place was very well managed. Um, um, all my other jobs have run into one form of another of like conti behavior from um, fellow co-workers, uh, from levels of management, and uh, even to the point of criminal harassment. And uh, I talked about that a bit in episode one, but I'm not going to get back to it. Um, but I'm a little disappointed today because uh, I had another ego engagement in a situation where I thought that I was free of that kind of situation. And uh, it's a big problem for me because... Um, I have some big decisions to make about what I'm willing to tolerate in my work environment. And uh, like I said to a coworker, I don't want to end up in a situation where, uh, let's just say it's far too expensive to defend yourself legally should things escalate. <clears throat> so we'll leave it at that. The rest you can keep to your imagination. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, you go in the workplace. We all have to remember that... Uh, Ego is a fact of life. A lot of people say that they aim for ego death, but realistically, um, there is no such thing as complete ego death because without an ego, you have no uh, means to express to this world. Um, and so the most that we can try to do is be conscious of our ego and to try to um, essentially mitigate a lot of the problems that come from ego-driven behavior, and I'm going to quote some Eckhart Tolle. Well, I'm not going to go ahead and do that and waste your time. But I will say that uh, Eckhart Tolle really woke me up to the idea of um, ego. And uh, anyways, workplace. I always like to say that uh, the work is the easy part. It's the um, people that make it difficult. So uh, let's all be conscious of our egos in the workplace, folks, and let's all try to get along. Let's try to, uh, if we're having a bad day, um, that's okay, but uh, we can't use our positions of authority to use people as a, you know, like a kicking tool, you know. We can't, like, use people as a sounding board, shoot the messenger, whatever analogy you want to use for this phenomena, it's just, it's unacceptable, and uh if you expect to retain staff in your establishment, you're going to have a tough time if uh, you don't respect the basic human decencies of your employees. Um, people expect to be treated with respect, and if not, then um, you're going to have trouble with that. But it's it's tough. Um, that's why I work for myself primarily. And uh, I guess a lot of people can probably write books on issues in the workplace, and I'm sure many books have been written on such topics. But... Anyways, let's all aim to not end up in a situation where we are expressing our egos in a negative way in the workplace. So, over and out, everyone. June 1st, the uh, ski hill's done, unfortunately. But uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to have fun this summer. So, over and out. Cheers. All right, everyone. So, it is, uh, what day is today? The uh, sixth month. Fourth? Yeah. So we're the 4th of June today, and uh, I am now out of my uh, part-time second job, unfortunately. Uh, but this isn't the first time that's happened for me. Um, I'll put this after, this will be like the intro for this episode. I think we're episode 10 now. It's been two weeks since I posted an episode, but I have been busy with like my personal ventures as well as working, and I did miss Gaper Day because now that I'm on full-out night shifts, I sleep in, and I literally slept till fucking 2 o'clock that day and missed Gaper Day, which I'm really upset about. But it was probably a grand old time for those that did go. Uh, I just got back from like a performance review kind of meeting, and um, apparently I danced too much um, on shift at nightclubs, and uh, bouncers got to be sexy and suave and security-like, <clears throat> even though the idea from the horse's mouth was that I'm supposed to change the um, the image of the asshole bouncer and be a fun guy, which the stat and our guests seem to enjoy, but I guess it was a little unprofessional from a management perspective, which is fair and I respect that decision. Um, ego in the workplace needs to line up. Everyone has to be on the same page, otherwise. Uh, somebody mentioned today it's like a hockey team and I thought that was an excellent analogy that um, 
sometimes you try out and sometimes you're not a fit with the team and uh, you got to, you know, it doesn't say anything personal about, um, you know, your own character. It's more or less how the team dynamic is driving. So that's cool. I will work elsewhere in town um, because I just like having side work in town. I like being part of the community. So I'm going to, I spoke to Castro's today and as I already said, I'm a huge fan of Whist Life. Uh, everything that Matt Hall built there, it's a great idea. Um, the Whist Life, Castro's ABC, you can get your hair cut, get your nicotine fix, and uh, as everyone knows, I like to vape, and um, get a massage too. They also have a Viva massage. So I'm a really snappy kind of dude. I'm quick with things. So I'm going to work there three, four nights a week and uh, do the scheduling and whatnot there and just try to like, you know, like he says, hey, you're welcome here because we like people who talk to guests. Nobody should come in without being greeted. So maybe that's a better line of work for me. So Let's do that. I'm also uh, continuing with my engineering and I'll keep you all posted on that uh, probably in the fall as to what is coming up with that. But that's going to be a fun little venture as well. Uh, going Right now I can't really talk about it so we'll just keep that on lockdown for now. So I'll start this episode probably like preamble with my little bit about when I first came back dealing with that ego situation at work. Because uh, I think I make some good points. If it's too snappy, I won't put it in. But we'll put that first. We'll have this intro. And then we'll continue the episodes. This is the 10th episode. We're at double digits now. Ooh. And uh, hopefully nobody got too pissed that I took a little time off here. I did also buy a camper van. And I'm a big camper van enthusiast. Um, I'll show you some. Maybe next episode. Maybe this one. But we'll discuss my 1980 360 Dodge camper van I just bought. Because that thing is a sight for sore eyes. I'll tell you what. Um, anyways, without further ado, let's get on with this episode, episode 10. Thanks, everybody. So when you get fired, folks, uh, you got to make the best of, a, best of a shitty situation, don't you? So what we're going to do today is um, I'm excited about my camper van, so we're going to have a look at that first. And I'll give you a brief history of uh, my little run-in with camper vans because it is kind of um, ski cast related in a way. Because uh, my original intent was to basically like live more or less mobile living. Um, this was like seven years ago. And I had a camper van that I really liked. And um, thanks to an incompetent propane filling attendant. I'm going to need my keys. Um, that camper van blew up at a gas station and made the news in the middle of fucking rush hour. So let's put that up this right now. This is my first camper van that started it all. Um, this is the Richmond News. Uh... This happened in 2012, on September 13th. Uh, my first camper van, it's very similar to the Dodge I just bought. <clears throat> it's an XTC. The tops are straighter and higher, so you have more room inside. I do like the getaways, but like my 88 there, but this is a nicer design for living. Um, yeah, so essentially it, uh, in the middle of rush hour, it caused commuter chaos. It was a bit of a problem um, and I got really upset. I had to end up going after the company because they didn't have a proper isolation valve in place and they didn't have training records for the guy who fucked up the filling and uh, long story short propane uh destroys things i fought this fire myself uh for with four fire extinguishers everybody else ran off and then after a big explosion i had to step back and let the professionals handle it so i lost all my uh work and everything else and that was like seven odd years ago so like I said, uh, vans are kind of near and dear to my heart, and I eventually want to get my Powder Highway Road Trip in. So next season, folks, on the ski cast, that's where you're going to see it. So, yeah. All right. I do have my keys. So let's go have a look at this bad boy. So essentially, I've had three camper vans throughout my life. Uh, this is number four. My first one was a 1992 6.2 liter diesel that started it all. And uh, that was when I was in my third year university and I didn't have much time to live in it because eventually it's uh that you know accident happened and I always wanted to recreate it <clears throat> I also lost all my textbooks laptop and that was going to be my capstone engineering project for uh 496 EC 496 where you design an engineering system and go through the product life cycle I was going to design a veggie oil conversion for it so I could run off waste veggie oil that I could collect and filter on board uh, from various sources along my road trips and that all got derailed so <clears throat> I bought another diesel 1990 van it was a 73 Ford one ton van low top it had been converted to a camper uh, by the previous owner an old German dude so it was a good buy <clears throat> 3500 bucks 
and I sold it for four or five uh, because it was just too cramped and it rode too much like a truck. This is uh, 2012. Um, this van I bought from uh, Sharon and her uh, dad owned this van. And really what I should have done is kept this van. Yeah, it was a ski and ski out view lot. That was a uh, badass. This was a great van. They called it the Panzer Kampfwagen and it was uh, owned by a German older fella for hunting and stuff. And uh, I should have kept it. It was a one ton. It was a good van. Um, I should have just put a high top on it and done the interior because it was a shorty. It was a diesel. Anyways, uh, some guy bought it with his uh, kid and uh, they used it for trips to northern BC. And uh, he was happy to, to buy it. It has a really nice hitch and it was a great engine. It just drove more like a truck and I'm looking for like a home, right? <clears> or <throat> I was at the time. So that was my 1990 uh, IDI 7.3 liter diesel um, van. Uh, thanks to Sharon, I had a lot of good times in this one too. Cheers. Then I got uh, the 90, uh, what was it now? No, that was the 90. 88 getaway van with a 351 Windsor and a C6 three-speed auto non-overdrive. Shit on gas, the thing overheated. I ripped out the engine and bought a four-banger Cummins. Those who know diesels <coughs> know that that's like <coughs> essentially a tractor engine. And it's like the big brother, the 6BT, 6-banger, six 5.9, 12 valve that everyone knows for reliability in the diesel world. And uh, what's going on here? Construction. Anyways, I bought that and uh, tried to do the conversion. It took like three years. I ended up leaving the mainland, went to Alberta. And I sold that project to a kid who was doing a weld welding apprenticeship with his father. And they do wheeling and dealing, rebuild cars. So it was the perfect uh, guy to take on the project. since I've had like a bit of a, a bug bite to still get this camper life in you know camper van in my life so essentially I uh, got myself this one now on a whim um, because I needed to buy something for the spring now that that motherfucking snowplow loader whatever the fuck it was destroyed my beloved Volkswagen Golf which you all know about from episode five or whatever it was that that happened earlier this winter so here's the van and uh, the fun thing about it is, so it's got the awning. It's uh, These are known as Class C RVs, my friends. It's got a nice receiver hitch. And the reason the body's banged up is uh, the old um, owner was a bit of a, I don't know if he was bipolar or he had some kind of conditions in which he would have rage attacks. I get a rage attack the first time I tried to meet to buy the van. He said, now the price is 4,500, fuck you. And I thought I wasn't gonna hear from him again. 
but uh, the dash is all smashed. And uh, there's like, I think he came at it with an ax. And also the inside is buggered, certain things. And he put a bunch of, <laughs> so I don't really know what happened. Um, but it's all good, of course my golf. So what got me thinking about vans again is that uh, I got a, um, just down the street actually, there's a guy who was selling a Westphalia Volkswagen. I was gonna put the diesel from this Golf, the 19 AAZ turbo diesel, into uh, his camper van. But it ended up being too many problems with his van and it would have cost me close to 10 grand, maybe about nine to finish the project. And oh yeah, so if anybody wants free triple pane windows, uh, come pick them up. They're not bad. Um, yeah. But camper van. Good old Dodge. 360, small block. Thing's got a lot of power. And I don't want to see what, uh, what my fuel bills are going to be. But I might end up doing another diesel swap in a few years time because that's what I do is crazy things to vehicles that upset my father and uh, make people wonder if I'm a psycho. But let's take a quick look in here. Yeah, so I just brought this camper van home, like literally a couple, like last week, essentially. And uh, so it does have the uh, oven and stove, which I really like. Um, person walking a dog. Oh, this is fun. Uh, on my drive back, like literally when I just bought it, this freaking thing exploded. We had to blow it in the tire. And I had to, luckily Walmart had two left that fit this van and uh, 15 inch um, for this particular van. And uh, I was able to pick them both up. So it worked out really well. So we got a fridge here, um, the bed, and he started putting like insulation, reflectics and stuff everywhere, which I really like. Um, as you'll notice, my first fan had a, a bed platform up top. This guy has a bunch of books and stuff in here. And uh, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is basically convert this. I'll show my preliminary sketch here of what I have in mind for this van. Yeah, it's, it's just, a, these are the, in my opinion, the best setups for like living because you have headroom, you can stand up. Um, you have, like essentially what I need in a home is transportation, or what I need for lifestyle design is I need transportation reliably, snow tires, um, I need to cook, so I need my kitchen, I like to bake yams, I like to cook eggs, I like to barbecue outside. Oh yeah, look, he beat the shit out of this too. I don't know, he had a girlfriend, he said he had three over the time he owned this van. And uh, yeah, the nice thing about the high tops too, <clears throat> lots of overhead storage. And uh, he had the exact same design idea I did, where I was gonna make like a mudroom, take out the passenger seat, and then I'm gonna finish this off, box this all in, and then have like a cabin interior, essentially a uh, low bed that converts to um, a uh, bar top where you can look out the window. This area here is gonna be a wet bath, bathroom, and I was so inspired by Scandinav Spa's eucalyptus steam room. I think that they're actually addictive. Um, so I'm gonna build like a steam room wet bath shower right here, and then up top, another platform to here for uh, the top bed and then remove this. So there's gonna be bed up top, two people, queen size bed platform with the windows. This window behind here will uh, access the bathroom, which will be under here. This part will be the bench. This part will be removed with a bar top that drops down to become a second bed, top bed, bottom bed, bathroom, kitchen, take a shit, eat, shower yourself off, have a sleep, have a friend, drive where you gotta go. And that's all you got, that's all you need with life. I like the floor he's putting here too, it's kinda cool. Oh, what a lick.
So, uh, let's see. So, uh, essentially, um, here's the van in its current state. That's the wet bath, kitchen. Um, yeah, no, like I said, I just got this van, so I made a bunch of photocopies of this because it's going to take me a couple iterations to uh, try to get this thing sorted out. But uh, yeah, I will keep you all posted. So van dwelling is fun, man. And it, I know this isn't skiing right now, but trust me, next winter it will be very skiing um, related. In that van. This will need some work, but it's a great project. He was asking four grand and I bought the thing for 3,500. So this will be this summer's uh, little project here. Camper vans, and has an awning too. My uh, goal with this is Powder Highway. Um, if anyone doesn't know, I mentioned it earlier on the podcast, but uh, if you have an epic pass for uh, Blackcomb, Whistler Blackcomb, then you get complimentary days at the RCR resorts, the resorts of the Canadian Rockies. And uh, what the RCR resorts do is, uh, uh, or what they include rather, is, um, uh, what do they include? They include Kicking Horse, they include Nakiska, just outside Calgary, it's a Calgary's Grouse. Uh, they include um, Fernie, I think, and they also include, uh, what else do they include? It's just insulation, uh, Kimberly. So my goal is to take a little road trip there. This guy is quite a character for sure. He has a YouTube channel too. I don't want to give him away to everybody because uh, I don't want to make him, you know, uh, feel uncomfortable. But he's an early childhood educator and quite a profound dude, actually. But I'm going to continue the legacy of what he tried to do with this van. I might have a little bit more uh, know-how and a few more tools. So I'm going to continue his legacy. And uh, yeah, um, I hope all the best for him in his next venture. But uh, I'm just stoked to get back into a camper van, my friend. Because as we all know, I'm a bit of a goofball. And uh, camper vans sort of jive with uh, my crazy personality. So, anyways. I hope everyone enjoys my van. And I'll keep you all posted on uh, my Renaults.
Anyways, so I might uh, work as a bouncer again at a different establishment in town. So uh, if anybody is hiring, uh, if anybody sees this, whether it be Mojo's, Gibbons, Scarfs, um, and uh, um, Bills, or Max Fish, I do like fucking your Mondays. So, uh, oh, they can understand why I last so long. And I'll try not to dance too much on shift. Just the fist. But yeah, if you want to hire me, let me know. I might work in uh, clubs again. I had fun. I shouldn't have to fuck for free. I can make a hit of high notes a cappella. Alright, that's enough.